Hey guys, Zane here with another one take review, and today I wanted to talk about Kiss's Love Gun. Love Gun is considered by many a Kiss fan to be the final album of Kiss's sort of classic run of albums before their misguided, misinformed, and frankly terrible ventures into the realm of pop and disco. However, even when I listen to Kiss's much more well-loved early years, I still can't help but wonder, beyond the theatrics, what the appeal of them was that sent them skyrocketing as one of the most successful bands of all time, and even Love Gun, one of their more well-liked albums, still raises those same questions to me. While I'm sure that many KISS Army members would violently disagree with me when I say this, Love Gun was the album where the four men in black and white face paint finally lost what little edge they had, but that's not really saying much either in the grand scheme of things. After all, even with all of their supposedly demonic imagery and hellish themes and claims to have put their own blood in their merchandise and sold it to fans, KISS were about as tough as pancake batter even in their heaviest moments. Some of the same people that call me a dork for listening to Rush are the same people that listen to a band singing about how they want to rock and roll all night and party every day, and that truly baffles me. Still, Love Gun was arguably the album where Kiss went from a light and relatively harmless band that had constantly been miscategorized as heavier than they really were, to a completely self-awareness-lacking band that was almost a self-parody of what they were beforehand. Throughout Love Gun, and even arguably the albums that came before it, KISS became accidentally the spinal tap of modern mainstream rock music. Love Gun isn't even remotely interesting from an instrumental standpoint, and compositionally, it's even below average. Taking notes from the power pop artists that came before them and ultimately influenced them, KISS tried to make these over-the-top choruses and guitar riffs that'll dance around your ears and sort of stick around within your realm of music listening for a while, even if you weren't the biggest fan of it per se. While I will admit that Love Gun is somewhat memorable for all of the wrong reasons, it's just cheesy in only the way that 70s macho man rock can really be. KISS were, to their time and their generation of music listeners, what Disturbed are today, and to what Five Finger Death Punch are today, dudes that thought they were too cool for school listening to this kind of music and thinking that they were the biggest badasses on the planet exclusively because they listened to this music without realizing that, hey, this is the dumbest music ever made. I suppose I shouldn't knock on KISS too much, as I do have a level of respect for them admittedly, but still, Love Gun is the definition of in one ear and out the other, beyond the mildly accidentally humorous factor about this entire listening experience, there's nothing truly traditionally memorable here. Rhythm guitarist Paul Stanley and bassist Gene Simmons act as the two different primary vocalists on Love Gun and generally were the primary vocalists for KISS in general. But in this case, we also see drummer Peter Chris, as well as lead guitarist Ace Fraley take up their own roles as vocalists on a couple of tracks. Both Stanley and Simmons are dreadful vocalists that have about as much charisma as the cardboard cutouts of themselves that I'm sure they sleep next to in bed at night. Simmons in particular is a weaker vocalist than what you would really hope for from a band like Kiss, as he attempts to occasionally add this sort of bluesy growl at the end of each line, but instead of Johnny Winters, it sounds more like a circus clown that decides to gargle mouthwash at the end of each sentence. It's truly annoying, and it lasts for every single song that he's featured on as a singer. Even the songwriting feels like it's a step down for Kiss. Yes, the band that did true literary masterpieces like Beth and Detroit Rock City and Rock and Roll All Night really got worse here somehow. It's frankly impressive. Look, it's Kiss. I get it. I'm not expecting T.S. Eliot-esque prose here or anything like that, but Christine 16 is a one-way ticket to jail, and other tracks such as the title track are just so cringeworthy in their overt sexual references with lacking any nuance. They just they feel like a dude flirting with a woman for the first time at age 27 without having any idea of how to actually flirt. It's kind of sad almost. I would even go as far as to argue that Kiss is the 70s rock macho band for modern day incels. Needless to say, bands like KISS and similar bands that came before and after them are the reason that rock music in general doesn't get a lot of respect in the lyrical department, and honestly, fair enough, it's some absolutely god-awful songwriting on this album, and again, I'm not expecting War and Peace to be presented here in a 30 minute long KISS album. I mean, I look at the cover and my hopes for decent songwriting are immediately just thrown out the window, but at the same time, 
I'd like to expect something that makes me not want to turn off this album, and unfortunately that's exactly what they deliver. So overall, Love Gun is a kiss going from a decent, fair to midland kind of overhyped pop rock band that people think were heavier than they actually were, to an unknowingly hilarious overhyped pop rock band that people think were heavier than they actually were. They always were never a great band, and the theatrics are generally what seem to really be the selling point of KISS, but Love Gun was them finally dumbing down their sound to the point of no return. And you know what? With relentless touring, an insane amount of albums under their belt, and frankly some of the most impressive stage aesthetics that I've ever seen before in the history of rock music, KISS could easily be one of the most hardworking bands out there in the entire history of music in general, but they are also one of the most overrated, overhyped, and over-the-top in an unknowingly comedic fashion, which is why I'm going to give Love Gun at 2 stars out of 5. I will admit there are definitely worse KISS albums to pick, and if I had to pick from Love Gun onwards, like every album that they did after Love Gun, I would probably pick Love Gun as the first to listen to, but that's kind of like asking me which finger I want to get cut off first, like I guess the pinky, I suppose, but... I would re really just prefer none of them. Frankly, everything KISS did before Love Gun is worth your time if you're curious about just goofy over-the-top 70s rock. It's good but not great and very overrated, but Love Gun was where they finally lost what little they had. So again, two stars out of five. And with that being said, that's the end of this review, and I'll see you guys in the next one.